Thank you for tuning into our seller interview series. Up today, we've got an affiliate business for sale in the health supplements niche. Created in July 2015, this business makes $3,392 per month in net profit, and the listing number for the site is 44117. We do these interviews to give potential buyers more information about both the seller and the sites they're looking to purchase. We hope these insights are helpful for you in making a buying decision. We've got the seller with us today to go through the business and cover everything from niche selection to traffic and monetization. How are you doing today, Rob? Good, Jake. Nice speaking with you. Yeah, thanks for taking the time to be on this call with me today. Where are you calling in from? I live in uh, Los Angeles, California. Los Angeles. So Orange County, California. I live in Orange County, Florida, so Orlando area. I just think it's mm-hmm. funny how the you know, two counties are called the same where Disney is. Yeah, yeah, that is interesting. Are you uh, keeping safe out there with all the fires? Yeah, it's been, you know, a lot of strange weather out here, but, you know, it's probably going on everywhere. Yeah, I just, you know, you see all the videos on Facebook and it's just, oh, man, I hope everyone's okay. Yeah, same with me. Yeah, so uh, before we dive into the questions that I have for you, I want to go ahead and run through a quick summary of the business. Again, it was built in July of 2015, has a monthly revenue of $3,443. Expenses of $51 to make for a net profit of $3,392, which is generated on a 12-month average. Included in the sale of this business are the domain, site content and files, affiliate accounts, and other various accounts, including Facebook, Twitter, and more. Rob, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Sure. So I used to work in the software industry out of college, and I've always been interested in technology in general. You know, around when I turned 30, I I kind of changed up my approach and I left my corporate job to see if I could cut it as an entrepreneur. I didn't really like the um, kind of the risks and the capital needed for starting a brick and mortar business. So I started doing some research online. Um, I came across a lot of uh, SEO related information and courses. And I realized that there was a lot of opportunity in owning and operating digital assets. So I, I kind of dove in from there. And how did you come up with the idea to start this specific business once you have the idea to start an online business? So, you know, I was doing a lot of reading about affiliate products and I kind of just saw some products that I was interested in promoting. And then I realized that, you know, you could build a website and one of the things I was interested in is getting organic traffic. So this keeps your expenses low. And that's kind of how I fell into doing affiliate for um, specific products. So... Why are you selling the business today rather than growing it yourself? So I've actually, since starting in SEO, I've gotten involved in multiple projects and I'm currently um, getting into a more e-commerce type of project, FBA type product. And it's been taking up a lot of my time. And with any product, I always like to see continuous growth with my products. This one has been pretty low maintenance in terms of operating, but there is potential for growth if you uh, put more time into it. So I just decided to kind of pass it on, free up some mental space, and work on my FBA product a bit more aggressively. So you say that this business is relatively small time commitment to maintain it. You know, how much time exactly is that? I would say, you know, there's a lot of, I mean, with any business, you can put in as much time as you'd like or as much time as you'd want to see growth with. But I'd say the the maintenance time for this business uh, on a monthly is probably somewhere around 10 hours a month, maybe two hours a week or so, and then a little bit of additional time to uh, create content. So just maintaining it's 10 hours and then a couple extra hours if you want to do additional content, but the full, you know, just keeping the business going is really only a couple hours a week. That's what I would, that's what, yes, I would say that's accurate. Yeah. So what are you doing in that couple hours a week? I'd say mostly it's just signing onto the site, making sure that there's nothing going wrong, you know, just looking at updating plugins and keeping everything running smoothly. And then obviously monitoring your rankings and your traffic just to make sure that everything is going as expected. And so you say making sure that things are going expectedly. Have things not gone as expected sometime when growing the business? Did you, you know, have any learning moments? Sure. So when I started this business, I was just getting into SEO. So I'd say that, you know, if a certain set of keywords isn't performing the way that you'd want it to, you'd probably manipulate stuff on site to try to improve those keywords. So things like looking at your content and how you've structured your content or 
looking at maybe the amount of content that you have on your site. So these are all things that I routinely did and analyzed as I was working on the site. And now you've really kind of fine-tuned all of that stuff. Yes. Can you just kind of talk about, you know, what sets your site apart in terms of the level of SEO and the content that you have? Sure. So I focused a lot on creating good content, good content for both ranking and for conversions. And I think that's an important part of SEO. And then I also focused a lot on on on-site SEO. So that's like how I structured my inner pages, how everything kind of linked together and what content was on one page to another. I think that these were all kind of important details to get off on the right foot when I started the business. You talk about this content. How often are you putting out new content? So generally, I put out content every month in the form of a blog post. So that's a a new page that's created on the site. And that's around 500 words of content that I do every month. Now, I think that it's also important to look at your ranking content and keep it fresh as well. So maybe I'll add a you know, a couple hundred words on ranking content from time to time as well. And you said that you are writing the content yourself? Yeah. So in the beginning, I wrote all the content myself, really because it was designed for ranking and also for converting visitors once they come to the site. But later on down the line, after things were kind of more established, I have outsourced some of the uh, blog posts, which are just kind of like topically related content. Would you provide the contact information for the people that you outsource the writing to in case a new owner wants to take advantage of that? Sure. So I've used some like personal VAs, but I don't really use content services because I think there's a kind of a higher quality when you train someone yourself personally. So I've used VAs from other parts of the world, but I'd gladly give out any resources in finding a VA or there are some content services that I think are okay, probably just get a little bit pricey if you're looking for really well done blog posts. So walk me through the monetization for this business. Sure. So it's a really pretty simple business plan, I'd say. The monetization comes from official product sites. So all I do is I rank the site and then I pass that traffic onto the official product site. When they get a conversion sale, essentially, they pay me a commission per sale. And that commission amount depends on the quantity that the uh, customer buys to the official site. The listing for the site, is says something about getting a higher pay commission due to, you know, something about driving a lot of traffic. Can you talk about that and how you came to that deal? Uh, yeah. So one of the things about this site is that the products that are listed on it or reviewed on it are in the same niche. So they're essentially a little bit of like competing products. What I realized was is that I was driving enough traffic from my site to these products that they wanted to be featured or they wanted, you know, the site to highlight their product. And so I was able to negotiate stronger commission deals because of the the amount of traffic that I was driving. And it seemed that, you know, we had this kind of cooperative business where I was providing a good amount of traffic and they wanted to reward me for that. And will those rates carry over to a new owner? Yes, absolutely. It's already been kind of discussed with the affiliate programs and everything. It should work out fine. So I'm sorry, did you mention that you are referring, I know you said that they're all close related, all the products you're referring, but are they all from one company? No, no, not from the same company. They're just in the same market space. Mm -hmm. So you have that same deal with all of the companies that you are referring to? So yeah, it's been, you know, you work with each affiliate separately, but the feedback is just that the relationship is good. And, you know, they've always wanted to kind of reward me for that ability to give them significant traffic. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. So, okay, if someone wanted to come in and put in the, you know, two hours a week that you are currently doing, that is very fine. They will continue to maintain the business as is, and they'll, you know, still make a few thousand bucks a month. But if they wanted to come in and put more time in to grow it, how should they go about that? Well, I think there's uh, several things that someone can do. For example, I did a lot of test CRO testing. So that's conversion rate optimization. So that's uh, making minor changes on a ranking page to see better conversions. And I think that that's something that can always be ongoing, where you can add content and see how it does or manipulate content and see how it affects conversions. So that's one thing. Another thing is 
people could always expand the site to review more products. So, of course, when you review a new product, you'd also have to then try to establish a ranking for the keywords related to that product. So, so that would take uh, additional work. And then you'd also have to create unique content for that new product. And that's another thing that someone can do to kind of further develop the site is to create more unique, interesting content that the readers want to read, essentially. Another thing is you could do additional keyword research. So that's just generally looking at this space and trying to find out which keywords drive traffic. And then just in general, you could kind of update the look and feel of the site if you were inclined to do so. I designed the site myself a couple years back, and that's just like with anything, there could definitely be some improvements. So when you put out the content, are you distributing it on social media? Uh, yeah, I syndicate the content uh, through various social media channels, namely uh, Twitter and Facebook. Have you seen a lot of success with Facebook and Twitter? No, I, I don't use it to drive traffic to the site. I just use social media accounts to kind of establish relevance and uh, trust for the site. And to give yourself a presence online. That's right. Mm-hmm. Just uh, to have the, all the bases covered. So for all of the accounts that are listed on the listing to come along with the listed on the listing, yeah. But for all the accounts that are coming along with the sale, do you use any of them for, you know, anything serious or are they pretty much all to just establish a brand presence online? Most of it's all for uh, brand presence, yes. I I don't use it for uh, as a traffic resource. Do you feel like utilizing those platforms as a traffic driver could be a big opportunity for someone who has that experience in social media? Sure, it potentially could be. I'm not familiar in in the social media marketing space. I haven't done a ton of research into it currently, but I know that it exists. And if someone was more knowledgeable than me in doing that, I sure, I think it could be an opportunity. Have you looked at doing anything with an email list for the site, you know, generating a you know, a list when you review a new product or post a new piece of content, you send an email to that list, they all get to go to the site, click your link and then go and purchase, you know, that could be another source of revenue. Yeah, I completely agree. I currently don't operate an email list. But again, that's another thing that someone could uh, put some extra time into develop the site. Yeah, I mean, if you come into this business with those skill sets, it's certainly clear that it has a strong foundation in the things that it's already doing. But if you do have these skills, you can grow it more in those ways. And in the other ways that Rob was talking about earlier, like, you know, expanding the SEO work, reviewing more products and all the other things that we've spoken about. So now talking about the content again, you used to write the content and, you know, lately you have been outsourcing the content to a couple of VAs, but in order to be able to you know, take over and proofread and publish and write the content themselves, obviously a new owner would need to know a little bit about the health supplement niche. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like there is a big learning curve? No, I wouldn't say so. It's not something that took me a long time to get familiar with. I think if, you know, as a business owner, you'd probably just kind of do your a certain level of diligence where you'd become familiar with the product. And, and if you didn't feel like you had the voice to write about this particular niche, then you could outsource it to someone who you felt did. But I had never felt any uh, problems with finding that voice or, or creating the content for the site. So if someone did have any questions, are you willing to sit down and walk them through everything they need to know for the business? You know, what kind of support would you offer someone during the transition period? Yeah, absolutely. I'd be uh, willing to share everything that I could to help the new business owner operate the business. I think the standard that I've heard is uh, two months of email and Skype calls, which is perfectly fine with me. Do you feel like there are any big risks associated with this business that a potential buyer should be aware of? Mm, I can say that I feel that there's any big risks, but I I think just in general with any affiliate product, you always want to... uh, one of the things that would be a risk would always be like the status of your ranking situation. So whenever there's like algorithmic changes or, or things seem to be shaking up a bit, you'd always want to make sure that your site is doing well in those situations. There's also in um, affiliate products, there's usually competition. So other sites that are coming up and trying to take positions. So that's kind of a general risk. Outside of that, I don't think there's anything in particular with this product or this niche specifically that creates risk. I guess another 
potential risk for an affiliate site would be since you are referring other people's products if the company that you're referring to goes under you know that w- could potentially put you in a rough spot but it sounds like you've done a good job with this business to not put all of your eggs in one basket and as you said one of the things that you would do if you were trying to grow the business would be to review even more products from different companies. So, I I mean, it feels like you've taken the steps to kind of minimize that risk. Uh, Do you feel the same way? Yeah, absolutely. I agree. So there are um, several products that compete in the same space. And from my experience, when you create a site that does well in a certain niche, when you kind of branch out to doing uh, various products, it's usually uh, not as challenging as when you're first starting a site. Mm Mm-hmm. Would you commit to a non-compete? Uh, absolutely. I, I don't plan on working in this uh, specific niche anymore. You know, obviously the best case scenario is that someone comes along and offers a 100% cash offer for what you're looking for for the business. But if that didn't happen, are you open to negotiations, you know, for other types of deal structures, like for instance, an earnout? Actually, with this particular project, I'm looking to complete the transaction in one deal. With the other projects that I have going on currently and and what I'll move on to next, I'd really like to kind of free up the mental space and also obviously the capital wouldn't hurt with ongoing projects. Yeah, I mean, you're starting new projects. You want to just kind of sell this one, move on and put the money and time and, as you said, mental power towards the you know, new projects that you have. That definitely makes sense. So Rob, I want to ask you one more question. But before we get to that, I want to go ahead and run through a quick summary of the business. Again, the business was built in July of 2015, has a monthly revenue of $3,443, expenses of $51 to make for a net profit of $3,392, which is generated on a 12 month average. Included in the sale of this business are the domain, site content and files, affiliate accounts and other various accounts, including Facebook and Twitter and many more. Rob, can you just kind of recap why you feel like this is a business worth buying? Give me your best 30 second pitch on why someone should purchase this business. Sure. So I think that this is a perfect property for someone who's looking for a website that's pretty easy to operate and maintain in its current state. But at the same time, there's I think there's also plenty of um, room for an opportunity for growth. The traffic and the ranking of the site has been very stable and very strong. So it's perfect for someone who likes to concentrate on creating additional good content and also kind of fine tuning those knobs to get better conversions. Another thing that I really like about the site is that the operational expenses are pretty low. It's almost all pure margin. So there isn't a risk of the site eating up more money than it generates. And that was really one of my goals when I first started this project. Yeah, you mentioned the expenses. The expenses are only $51 on average for the last 12 months. So to run the business for the last year, it cost you about $600. Does that $600 just go to the website hosting? Yeah, mostly, uh, you know, hosting, registrar, and then some of it, as I've already mentioned, goes out to outsourcing content Mm -hmm. uh, when needed, and then, uh, you know, other various small types of tasks. Yeah, Maybe yeah, create, that makes creating sense. a banner or something like that for this site. artwork. You know, you need a you need a design done. Yeah, that definitely makes sense. But I mean, six hundred dollars for the last year when you know you've made oh, what would the math be? I guess about forty thousand dollars in the last year. I mean, it kind of pales in comparison. Yeah, that's a great thing about affiliate sites. You know, once you get them established, they really do become uh, passive and kind of residual income. Mm-hmm. So, I mean. I guess how I feel about it is it really seems like a business that, as you said, has very little time needed to be put into it if you want to maintain it as is and continue to make that, you know, three to $4,000 a month. But if you want to grow it, there are also opportunities to, if you can come to the table with some skills, you know, in order to be able to utilize some of the platforms not touched by the business yet, like for instance, social media marketing, email marketing, expanding products, and you know, all of that stuff. It really sounds like this business could be what a buyer would make of it. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. Rob, thank you so much for taking the time with me today. Yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. If you're watching this on YouTube, subscribe to our channel. And if you want more information, the link will be below the video that will take you to this marketplace listing. If you're watching this on the listing site and want more information, become a depositor today. When you make the deposit, one of our business advisors will be in contact with you and you'll be given everything you need to review this business. Have a great day.